Hey guys! Welcome to the third video about my drum set development. I have received some suggestions from you on how to set up the drum kit in a new and beneficial way off the beaten tracks. This has encouraged me and here is my newest creation. On my way I have once more gained some new and interesting aspects which I want to share with you today. This setup is based upon the experiences I gained with my last two setups. After playing on a conventional drum kit with a hi-hat on my left side for a while, I just set up my cable hi-hat once again and realized that I prefer having the hi-hat on my right side. This can be even a little further to the right, so I have to move over a little with my arm. Because the one thing that always gives me trouble with tightly arranged drum sets is that just by slightly departing from the racing line, one runs the risk of hitting one's hand on something or hitting the wrong instrument. That's a fundamental issue. Let me expand on this for a moment. If you interact with an object, a task space develops between you and the object, a zone of potential action which you can sense physically. For example, you can feel the flight path in advance if you try to throw something into a garbage can from a distance. You probably know that. Especially athletes from all kinds of ball games know this feeling, but also us drummers, because we constantly aim for different objects and hit them. This task space has some range of variation, meaning it is as big as the largest occurrence of the movement will be. For example, if you play very loud or show off a little. If some other object penetrates this task space, it is disrupted and you feel inhibited. You might know this feeling from riding a bicycle. If you ride along a wall, you keep a distance to keep the task space intact. That means you leave more space than you need between you and the wall to allow for the possibility of a gust of wind or a rock on the ground to bring you in, your, in a sideways motion. If someone comes towards you and forces you to get closer to the wall, your task space is disrupted. You can already feel, as a kind of foreshadowing, the pain in your hand or elbow from scratching along the wall. So you break because you don't feel safe anymore. This feeling I don't want to have on my instrument. This is why I pay attention to position the single parts in a way which allows the task space between hand, stick and instrument not to be interrupted by any other object. The cowbell is a good example. It is sometimes positioned like this, directly above the floor tom. That's very convenient, but I personally always feel a little inhibited when playing this way, because I sense that at every hit my fingers stop just a few centimeters over the hard rim of the drum. The snare is a good example too, of course. I have placed it high enough so I won't hit my thighs. And as a result, I have placed the hi-hat all the way to the right, where there is nothing beneath my hand when I'm playing it. The right symbol is also positioned in a way that no rim interferes with the task space. Furthermore, I left some space between the path to the bell and the crash symbol, and also got rid of the felt washer on the right. You probably know this. You want to play the bell, but hit the washer instead, and there is no tone at all, or you even hit a different instrument. I wanted to prevent this. The toms are again placed at my sides. It is just the most comfortable position for me. I never really liked extending my arms to the front to play on a rack tom. And so I have gained some space for the cymbals here and less barriers between me and my bandmates and the audience. The centers of the drums are almost symmetrical to the snare drum, but allow for the fact that the positioning of the instruments which are played the most have priority. And those are in this case bass drum, snare drum, hi-hat and the right cymbal. Here you can see another little gimmick. My floor tom got some slippers. These are called booty shakers and they are supposed to let the floor tom, which is muffled by its solid stand on the ground, resonate longer. They let it have more tone. 
and it works, but I mainly use them to elevate the floor tom a little. For my setups, floor tom legs are always too short. I even turn the outer ones, which are already fully extended, inwards, so they get even higher. And the booty shakers just give me an extra two centimeters and in fact enhance the sound of the drum. So this is a nice little gadget. That the symbols are very close and even one over another has two specific reasons. It began with me putting the right symbol from the right to the left side as a test. I didn't want to alter the symbol stand at first and just put a crash symbol on it as it were. I immediately realized how comfortable it is having two crashes one above the other. We mostly play the crashes just on the edge, so there is a lot of unused space you can save if you place them one over another. Also you can easily switch between the symbols just from the wrist and this has another big advantage. Crash symbols will crack at a certain point, at least in rock music. The risk of this is very high if you hit the same symbol in a quick succession. Why? Well, you probably have seen some slow motion videos of a symbol before. Then you know that it is vibrating massively and big waves are running along the edge of the symbol. If you quickly hit the same symbol again, chances are high that you will strike it in that moment in which the wave has its highest point. This will result in a very high deflection at that point, which might exceed the limit of elasticity of the material, which will result in a crack. This is why I even incorporated another crash in my setup and distribute my hits among the now three symbols so each one can settle down before I hit it again. Therefore, two symbols which you hit alternatingly have a durability which is more than twice as long as the lifespan of a single symbol. Thanks to drummer and drum tech Flo Core who introduced me to this phenomenon. The disadvantage of this model is of course that the top symbol will cover the one below and it won't be heard as well through the overhead microphones. But of course you can make the best of it and place those symbols lower which are louder on their own or have a more piercing sound and always cut through like China symbols or my FX crash. Or you choose the lower symbols for the more diffuse or discrete sounds. So if I play a steady beat on a crash symbol, I use this one and play the accents on these. Like in the second video of this series, I play the slave pedal of my converted double pedal with my right foot and the hi-hat pedal is placed within. This way the bass drum is far enough to the left so I can place my snare drum very far to the front because there is nothing in the way. That way I can hit the center of the drum from a relaxed home position. And you can see that this means that I can in fact close my legs behind the snare drum. That's a good rule of thumb at least as a reference point. Because if you sit so far in front that you have the snare drum between your knees, you have to pull back your elbows. This is not a good position in the long run. Well, that's it. I hope I could once again give you a little insight into the development of this setup. It is a further development of the concepts from the last two videos. It's great that some ideas stood the test of time so they reoccurred, like the toms to my sides or the crossing pedals. But there are always new aspects coming up and so with this setup the decisive factors which I paid a lot of attention to were, for example, a good accessibility without the task space between me and each instrument being disrupted. Also a positioning that helps preventing the symbols from damage and allows for playing freely, uninhibited and intuitively. And finally an important tip. If you create a new setup yourself, it has to provide for how you play in your band or your style. I've had this myself. You write down a cool idea or place your drums in a new way before playing them and it looks very good. But when you do play them, it doesn't work out at all. Because you forgot that in your music you make much bigger movements or that there are some instrument combinations which feel very good, but you just never use. Of course, a new setup can inspire you to new ideas, but in the end it is about what Billy Ward said. You have to make your drum set your ally. Assemble it in a fashion that you feel comfortable with and can play intuitively on. Find your home position with a good posture and place the instruments, each one according to your preferred course of movement and always take the relations between the different instruments into account. Then a lot of things will fall into place on their own. Alright, have a good time trying out some new things. 
If you have a question or a suggestion, please write them in the comments below. And with this setup and our new album, I'll be on tour now. Maybe I see you somewhere around. I always enjoy talking to other musicians or talking to people for that matter. And I'll definitely see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thousands of men to press me out. They're dancing to the tunnel, unleashing louds and loud. Stashed on beam of metano. Yes.